all them, and then they just flip over their whole deck and then shuffle it. Right. So, do you think these players have any idea what they're in for here? I hope they do. <laughs> I actually hope they don't. I want to see the look in their face when they realize it. Me too. That should be fun. So here we go. Chrome Mox. Michael Dye on the play. Can we get the face cam of, uh, of William Yowell? <laughs> Doing Red Elemental Blast. The, wow, Stone Face. He has nothing. Turn one grindstone. William Yowell gives away nothing there. Now here's the question, right? If, if Michael Dye somehow has the turn able to go off the next turn, right? Uh, is he going to name red or green or any other color just so he doesn't get automatically uh, grinded out? Or just so he doesn't get power, uh, Red Elemental Blast? Well, I, I think it depends what else William his, Yowell plays. Yeah, William Yowell has only played... <laughs> oh, that William is... William uh, Yowell plays Painter Servant that, into Grindstone. Wow, that is... Uh, that is a risky play. Yeah, if Michael... That, that is uh, pretty uh, pretty daring. If Michael Dye has a two-mana land here, or a land and a spirit guide, he will just win on, on the spot. So it's on blue, which means that he, if he has a um, Red Elemental Blast, yeah, he can pitch a Simeon Spirit Guide. Right. And, oh, and there's no second land. Wow. GZP. And Grindstone as well from William Yow. Yep. I have to imagine Michael will blast this if he has it. I imagine he will. Yep, there it is. There's the pyro. And no follow-up. Counter target blue spell. With his own uh, Simeon Spirit Guide. Nope. Which he may not have. He does have a Faithless looting in his hand. How much gall does it take to just <laughs> to, to play the Painter Servant into your opponent's grindstone? I would never have done that there. I would, I, I, I would not I have would, the stones. I just don't have it. I don't have the fortitude to do that. No. So Great Furnace comes down. City of Traders gets sacrificed. Faithless looting. William Yow will would love to draw some blasts. There's one. There's one. With, oh, and a lotus petal, so we can actually play the lotus petal. Wow. And have that blast back. Yeah. Do you think he'll just blast the grindstone right now? Yeah, uh, I, I would if I, I was think, him. I think you have to. I, I definitely would. Otherwise, you give your opponent the opportunity to. Uh, it's that or you're going to kill your own. Or you're going to have to kill your own painter servant. Right. So yeah. Wow, Michael Dye reads lotus petal. Interesting. Pyroblast. The grindstone. No cards in hand, I believe. Wow, he's empty. Painters, top, and great furnace. Man. And now they're talking about now. Now they're having a good laugh about it. Oh boy! Welder from Michael Die. Welder is a big one. That's going to be able to turn the painter into a lotus petal on command. The land into a lotus petal on command. Yeah, if he untaps with that, uh, you know, he he can just turn his chrome box into back into a uh, grindstone. Or that. Goblin Welder is a really good card in this matchup. Gob Goblin Welder is quite good in this matchup. <laughs> Beatdown commences. Combat step 20, entered. 20, William Yow, 19, Michael Dye. Says go. Ooh, and Recruiter ooh, drawn. Yeah, Recruiter's good. Still no mana, though. What else? Does he just have just a handful of painters? I think a lot of painters in hand right now. Yeah, what he needs is a Faithless Looting. Yes. Now, if, if oh. I'm Michael Dye, I, I play that Painter Servant just so I can weld it into a grindstone. And it looks like he does not have a Lion's Eye Diamond either. Huh. To be able to do that. I really like Lion's Eye Diamond in this deck. Yeah, at least a few of them. So we'll see what Michael Dye decides on here. It's just a staring match now. And the thing is that because it's naming blue, they have, both have so many red elemental blasts. Right. Everything, just, everything is just suspect. Everything is risky. I'm really happy I'm not playing this match. Because <laughs> this game can just end at any time. So fetch land for William Yowl. Gets basic mountain. And uh, he's creeping up there in mana. He's going for it. William Yowl has to do something pretty quickly here because that Goblin Welder will just take over the game if he doesn't. Yeah, that guy, he, Goblin Welder needs to die. Yeah. Turn your Great Furnace into a Lotus Petal. Turn your top into a Lotus Petal. Yeah. Wow, Michael Dye does not end of turn Welder. I'm not, I think he's maybe not familiar with how it works with, uh... Artifact lands? With his opponents. His maybe opponents not, things. maybe not. 
He will weld the chrome mox now into a grindstone. Yep, so he... Oh, yep, kills it in response. Yep, so Michael died down to Exchange zero artifacts. Exchange cannot happen. Nope. Now we can't we must play his own servant. Yep, so another artifact. So next turn, if he draws a mana source, he should be able to mill his opponent out. But it looks like Wooly Meow has yet another blast on top. William Yowell playing six blasts. Michael Dye playing the full eight. Both players well, I, playing Blood Moon, too. I just don't know about naming blue here. I think you almost need to name red. As William Yowell or as Michael Dye? As Michael Dye. Hmm. But he, he just has another blast in his hand. Right. Shut off those blasts. And there's a blast in the welder. William Yowell has drawn so many blasts in this game. I think he's gone through four or five of them now. He doesn't Not have many left. Top. Yeah. Untaps and uh, Michael die. Another blast. Blasts wow. all around. And now we're just <laughs> in this amazing game of uh, draw go somehow. Yeah, it's both of them sitting there, knowing they can die at any time. Cough Off of the, the hammer. hammer. I don't think Michael Dye was expecting that one. Are we going to blast that? I have to think we will. There it is. There's the blast. So blast traded all around. This has to have been the most red blasts and pyroblast played in this amount of turns. Yep. Oh, there goes the pace. Ever. <laughs> Michael Dye would love to find a two-mana land here. Yeah, Cast he that would. recruiter. That would be great. Discards painter, painter. Knows they won't have any shortage of those. Nope, and he did. He drew a uh, city of traders. Yep. Worm coil, recruiter in his hand. It looks like. Worm coil, probably not great right here. No. That one's probably not what he's looking for in this matchup. Not so much. So Michael Dye looks like he's going to fetch up a goblin welder. The welder goes to Michael Dye's hand, and he will be saying go now. That flashback faith is looting for yep. William Yowl. Sees a blood moon. <laughs> Another not uh, not so spectacular right now. No, when uh, when both decks are built to abuse Blood Moon, it's probably not so good. And there's that top. top. Yep, top is doing a lot of work this game. Yeah, it is. Interesting that these two archetypes are the same, but so many card differences. Yep. They only share maybe 40 cards, including basics. Yeah, that's crazy. Right now, Michael died. It's a staring match. Yeah. They're just, you know, both of them know that each person is just a grindstone away. <laughs> both players have gone through one grindstone. And they're just sitting there going, how? Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Two, Two welders. welders. They're sitting there. How many blasts can you have? Now, right. now Michael Dye is tapped out on red now, which gives uh, William Yao the opportunity, if he does happen to draw a grindstone. Yep, he'll spin his top. He needs it to find it. That and a little more mana. Yeah. And neither player has any way to avoid getting decked. Nothing they can weld in. Nope. Nothing like that. And top. Only another top for William Yowl. And a blast. And wow, red blast drawn. So he probably, he just goes, yeah, you go to weld. Weld that uh, into uh, that, that painter servant. See what happens. Goes to weld that if William Yao responds. Oh, and he just packs it up. Yep. Doesn't have the doesn't ha have the blast. Yep, he knows what's going on. He knows his deck's milled. Man. He's having a good laugh about the mirror match. It's like, wow, so. They can't believe they traveled all this way to uh, play a painter. They're both going, mirror. I'm sorry, dude. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, so, I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah. I didn't know. Neither one of us could have planned for this. Yeah, how do you plan for this? How do you. Oh, uh, this is such. This is a, it, you know, it's a fairly well-known legacy deck, but it's so hard to put together. Right. You know, 
recruiters are so hard to find. They're, they're yeah, not only expensive, just hard to find. Yeah. Not very many exist in, in the entire United they're States. They're hard to find. Yeah, it, this set was never officially released in the United States. Right. Uh, the, the English cards from it come from, I believe, Australia, though I know that a lot of them did come here. But, you know, it's they're just really hard to find. It was not tournament legal when it came out. So it's not like anybody ever, you know, bought all the cards. You know, it was just a casual thing. And then uh, I think 2004, 2005 ish. Yeah, they, they were like, we're going to make all those cards legal all and magic. All portals legal. Yeah, they said, you know what? Those should be legal and vintage. It doesn't, you know, or internal formats. It doesn't matter. Right, and back it's, then, legacy it was makes, just. Uh, yeah, it makes no sense. And, uh, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, oops. recruiters went from $0. To uh, what are they like now? 150, 200? Yeah, right, somewhere in there. 250, somewhere in that range. And Imperial Seal. Wow, Imperial yeah. Seal. A one of in vintage decks. That is what it's used for. How much Imperial Seal worth? I think 250. I'm going to check Star City. I though. think it's a lot more than 250. Well, either way, it's going nowhere but up. Yeah, and you know. So you had the read on those. Congratulations. Yeah. Nice speculation. Uh, Whoa! Yep. Currently, Imperial Seal is going for seven ninety nine. Jeez. Yep. So if you want to get into vintage, uh, I and guess that's, that's a little bit. That, that is the English version because the English is rarer actually than the uh, the foreign versions. Right. The Japanese version is only five, only five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for one Magic card. Yep. Uh, that's not called uh, Mox. Mox, right. Uh, Mox it's Pearl, also pretty good EDH. Yeah, it is. You know, if you don't need to make any car payments. <laughs> so looking ahead to these players' sideboards, uh, like we were saying, Michael Dye gets Leyline of Sanctity. He gets Viashino Heretic, which if you're unfamiliar with this one... Oh, that one could be real good. Let me tell you what it does. I actually have to look it up because... Uh, it, uh, I, I believe it is heretic. one in red uh, for a 1-2. One, one, two. One, red two. tap, destroy target artifact, and it's controller... Uh, red and one, sorry, destroy target artifact. And Heretic deals damage to that artifact uh, controller equal to the artifact's casting cost. Right, so cost 3 for a 1 3, cost 2 to use, tap 2, kill an artifact, they take damage equal to cost. Meanwhile, William Yowl, his big card, actually I think is Volcanic Fallout. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a 1 3, so it will survive the Fallout. Right. Build 1 3 for 3 for 3. Uh, volcanic Fallout kills Painter Servant. Does it? Uh, Painter Servant's a 1 2, right? 1 3, oh, I think. A one, three? Yeah, I think he is. Let's look that one up. He might be a 1 3. I've never actually seen him enter combat. These pesky 1 3s. You're right, he is a 1 3. Man, oh man. The 1 3 Painter. Man, this guy's a really pretty far above the curve. 2 for a 1 3? 2 for a 1 3. It's like Lumen Grid Warden status right there. <laughs> so, uh. You know, there's a lot of big cards, though. Jai is going to be big. Surgical extraction out of William Yell's sideboard. Yeah, that, that actually, one's really. Yeah, William Yell has a lot to fight the the, uh, the welders of Michael Die. Right. Michael Die could board in Leyline of the Void. I don't think that's going to be worth it solely no. to fight the uh, the one ones, the welders. I don't think that's worth it. No, I very macabre. The shattering spree can come in. The big question for me this uh, this whole match is: I think there are times when you don't name blue. I think there are times that you name red or green or whatever other color just because you want to shut off your opponent's blast because blasts are just so big. Hmm. So your opponent, you know, you go to play that and your opponent thinks, oh, he's just going to name blue. I'm not sure that's how it works, actually. I, I, I think I think the way it actually might work if there are two painters in play, one on blue, one on red, is that the cards are both blue and no, red. No, the, the concern is that if you play the first painter, you might not name blue because... If, if you don't have any blasts. Right, if you have no blasts. Or you, you just, like, you're going to win... If they don't blast you, I see. That, so that makes you don't set, sense. you don't set it up. You're just like painter, you know, green. name green, grindstone. Yep. Your it's gonna work. Your opponent's like you meddling kids. I had all these blasts. <laughs> Why didn't you name blue? It'll be interesting to see if Yao or Dai thinks of that though, because it's pretty unintuitive. Because you always name blue in this. Right, because in, in every other deck you have all these blasts, and they're, you know, they can be a reliability in the mirror matchup. You know, if you don't have, if your opponent has more than you, you know, you have, if you have mana, you've got a grindstone out. You're playing a painter server and you have the ability to pay three mana. Yeah, why, why yeah. name blue? Name a different color. That way those blasts can't do anything. But those have to come up. You know, that has to come up, and I don't know who will. It's uh I could definitely see it coming up. Both players do have a lot of cards to sideboard out. Uh, Blood Moons will be the first cards to go. Magus of the Moons also. Um, Worm Coil Engine for Michael Die. Koth of the Hammer might come out for William Yowl. It'll be interesting to see how the how the players sideboard. They are interesting. All the moon effects, though, automatic cuts for both players. Right, and uh, looking at their decks, um, 
Yao is the only one that has Lotus Petal. Huh. Or so, Lotus Petal or versus Lotus Michael Dai's Zero. Right, Michael Dai is playing Chrome Moxes. Yeah, so, full four Chrome Mox, too. Little, you know, there's this, these little differences in these decks. Yeah, both zero mana, mana sources, but uh, just a little different. You know, if you can just go off, I guess you just don't, don't name blue. Right. So we'll see if William Yowell can uh, come back here on the play. It should certainly help. Overall, I think I like Lotus Petal more in this mirror. In the mirror, I think so, too. Game one. There, there is the, the, the risk of getting um, welded out. Right. But I guess that also exists. I guess it actually might be worse than Chrome Mox. They just wall out your Chrome Mox. Game one, uh, Chrome Mox is probably better because you have so many moon effects to exile. Yeah. Game two, though, uh, you're probably right that Lotus Petal is better. So William Yao going to six cards. Michael Die, happy with his seven. How important is Mulligan in this matchup? I don't think it really matters how many cards you have. See, I think it's huge. I think that uh, because the, the the combo needs enough card, like uh, so many cards, that uh, I, I think that might be actually be a really big uh, big thing is, is is Mulliganing. It might just be an attrition war with these blasts, as it was the first game. Well, it was only an attrition war because uh, William Yao named blue. Right. If uh, Michael Dye had played his Painter Servant first and named a different color, then all the blasts just do nothing. That's true. And there's really no way to stop Painter Servant uh, as, as, at instant speed. So, if you're either of these players, do you side out any Painter Servants? No. No? No, I don't really? think so. I, I don't think you can rely on your opponent to, to do it for you, and I think that you have to... Um, I, I, think the only, I think the way you win this is going to be through Painter Servant. As, you know... You just, it's just it's a matter of painters from not naming blue and getting in a position where you can do that. And a Tormod's Crypt from William Yao as well as a, um, a Michael uh, as well as a, a top. Yep. Michael Dye has a mountain and a, um, a Goblin Welder. Yep. I definitely uh, like the player's chances who has the Welder here. I welder do. is just such a powerful card. That is card. a Foil Welder. Oh my. Foil Welders are very nice. But I can't tell if it's a DCI Foil or a Pack Foil. Looks like DCI. Not as nice as pack foil. Those are those used to be the that used to be the most expensive foil that existed. Yeah, and, uh, it used to be I think four hundred. Some some crazy some, amount. Something absurd. It was just so hard to get those foils. Yeah, the print run on foils from Urza's Legacy was just so bizarre. It was a little bit lower. It was, it was the the rates were a little lower than they are now. Yeah. Sometimes also you just got a pack that was all foil in that set. I heard about that. I never saw one. I remember seeing one. We saw one get opened. Uh, that that was that was one of the first. Uh, First events I ever went to at, my, at a store. Now, I thought magic was awesome at that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two tops, and he is searching with both. He play uh, plays the City of Traders, uh, or plays a Mountain, Sack City of Traders, pops top, plays Imperial Recruiter. Shuffles away that top. What only only needs one this game. That's all you really ever need. Right. Interesting. Uh, William Yao choosing three tops. Michael dies zero. Yeah. Again, there's these little differences. But, you know, the difference again. Uh, William Yao playing fetch lands, Michael, uh, uh, Michael Dye not. Right. Only so three of them. So despite really being about the same deck, they're just that much different. Yeah, there are a lot of differences. So Imperial Recruiter fetches up Phyrexian Revoker. And that will assuredly name Goblin Welder. He will need a turn to get that into play, though. Michael Dye will have one turn of welding before that happens. If there's anything he can weld. Right. At this time, there's not. Uh, he sticks his tongue out, I believe, to imply that uh, <laughs> that was not the card he wanted to draw. I believe it's the universal sign for that. Right. I could be wrong. Well, that's what I mean when I stick my tongue out. Oh. And welder and imperial creator trade. Wow. And another recruiter. Now, what is he going to get? That is the question. Is he going to get a? Uh, will it grind? Will it? That is the question. Will it grind? <laughs> <laughs> now, Imperial recruiter out of stock at Star City for three hundred. Yep, hard card to get. Yeah. And yeah, it's it good. It's great in this deck. It's great in Lurin. Both decks very hard to actually get the cards for. Solemn Simulacrum, wow. So is Michael Dye on the beatdown plan here? He just might be. He's one of Solemn. 
So Michael Dye, Solomon his, Standard, his plan Solomon Legacy. might just be to get, you know, get up to, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, get up to six. <laughs> A curve all the way up to six. That's yeah. what he said in the winner's interview, right? Hey, it's a plan. Yep. Long, you got to have a plan. Solomon Worm Coil are the two cards that are in common between his Legacy deck and his Standard yeah. deck. Reading Tormod script and making sure it works the way he thinks it does. It does. I imagine there's not a lot of ways to confuse that card. <laughs> so Ancient Tombs tap. Pretty, pretty, pretty common. Yep. yep. William Yowl down to 17. Ancient Tomb tap so he can uh, pop, uh, spin the top. Yep, and those are not three good ones. We have Spellskite. City of Traders Ancient Tomb. Spellskite not able to redirect uh, Grindstone, unfortunately. Nope. And Blue Meow has all of its man acceleration and just no actual combo. Yeah, no. Sh it looks like no more shuffle effects either. Yeah, so, so he, he passes back. Yep, doesn't play the Revoker. Looks like he wants to save that for something else. Wants to see who draws the first Grindstone before he decides. I think it's, uh, it's probably a. A good move. Yeah, you do run the risk of just dying from it, but uh, you would also feel pretty silly if you locked yourself out of winning. That is very true. Solomon comes out, gets a mountain. And we'll see if Michael Dye kept in Worm Coil Engine. Ooh. He'd have to have it in his hand, though. Yeah, he would, and it's only one of. Yeah. Imperial Recruiter can't tutor that one up. A little bigger than, uh, a little bigger. A little yeah. too big. Power greater than two. Yeah, no. I think Worm Coil has that. Just, just by a little bit. And uh, in comes the Recruiter. The Beats commands. Taking them to 16. When I played Aluren, I definitely killed people with Imperial Recruiter Beats. That does happen occasionally. Had some help with Dreamstalker, stuff like that, but... William it, it Yow, helping Michael die out by tapping his City of, uh, or, uh, Ancient Tomb. Ooh, going to 15. Spellskite's a stopper. It's a game changer. Stop that song dead in its tracks. Looks like there's a Grindstone. Yeah. Now the question, does he have a Painter Servant? He has the mana. Well, he didn't fetch one up with that uh, with that Recruiter. No, he did not. I see uh, I see a Heretic. I see... Simeon Spear Guide. guide. Um, that recently drawn Grindstone, but the other cards are a mystery. Oh, boy. Simeon Spear Guide. He is going full beat down. It's going to be that kind of game. And a Grindstone. Yep, and it looks like two Chromoxes. Ooh. Huh. So William Yowl, end of turn, uses his top, sees a Magus of the Moon. He'll put that one on top just to trade with uh, with the Simeon. Oh, no, he won't. And Revoker is probably going to name Grindstone here. Yeah, I think it has to. And that's going to make it real hard for Michael Dye to actually uh, grind him out. He's got to get through the Spell Sky first. I might have held that grindstone. Wow, he's taking a lot of damage from his ancient tombs here. He is. He he's really down to is. nine life. Maybe Michael Dye will just be able to get get enough in. I think he might. One more creature will. Uh, well, if he ever draws another Imperial recruiter, he'll be able to recruiter for recruiter for recruiter. Well, and the the, her the heretic. Yeah. Is going to get pretty relevant too. That's big. That's real big. Uh, now it looks like they're just having a little staring contest. I think that Michael Dye can still attack, can't he? I think you might just pass. I mean, I think that... Uh, what are the odds that uh, that William Yao draws the ability to just grindstone you out? Very he, small, he, if the Revoker's on grindstone. Well, exactly. If you attack and he blocks the Revoker, it's a little, little bit higher chance of that. That's true. I guess Michael Dye thinks his chances are so high this game with that uh, with that Viashino in play that... Um, that Viashino is a real powerhouse. Yeah. First, it'll kill Spellskite. Then it'll yep. move right on down the line. And again, it deals damage. Wow. And uh, William Yell going to seven. For a Magus. For a Magus of the Moon. So all these blockers, uh, they're fine, but... Wow, and he, he just keeps tapping that Ancient Tomb. Well, uh, the, the Magus of the Moon. For, oh, right, 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 right. right. Keeps him from right, actually losing any life. Yeah, and, you know, he's had a City of trailer, uh, a city of Trailers available on top of his deck this entire time. If he had just had one of those instead of an Ancient Tomb, he would yeah. still be at, like, 15 life. more life. And now the Heretic becomes active. Ooh, and a Recruiter's And it's going to be real hard for William Yell to be an active Heretic. Yeah. Michael Dye this turn will probably uh, use Heretic. 
keep that mana up. Recruiter for recruiter. I think you just recruit for uh, Painter Servant. Now you only have one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have enough to actually grind them out, but you can just getting spell. Uh, oh, he's actually targeting the. Uh, did he target Revoker? I think he targeted Revoker. I mean, if he's, he's if he's gonna uh, use it, he's got to uh, either sacrifice a Lotus Pilot or pay two life. Right. I'm not sure I like that main phase. That that opens him up to uh, to just dying. I think. Yeah, I would have waited till my own next turn, personally. Either way, I would have paid the recruiter, gotten my own painter servant, um, and just waited until next turn to do that. Right. But hey, it's just me. What's that die? Yep. So William Yowl down to five. Uh, you might have a combat here. Bring in the well, bring in the your two two twos. Yeah, I think that's fine. The spirit guides will be forced to trade with each other. Yeah, yeah. He does want to keep that Magus on play, in the play, because right. uh, all of a sudden the Ancient Tombs are looking pretty scary for him. Yeah, on five He's not going to just die to those. Now the Recruiter come out, will come yep. out, and yep, it looks like it will fetch a Painter after Michael Dye kills that, uh, that uh, Revoker there. <clears throat> And he's getting up to being uh, William the Owl's turn. What can he draw to get out of this? It looks like he drew a top. He's going to uh, spin top and see what's there. I don't see anything helpful. No, I think we see we have a painter there, but... It looks like a um, target dragon lord, but that's not nearly fast enough this match. No, that, that would have been good earlier in this game. It would have been great. Like William Yowell, he was explaining where this game went wrong. <laughs> Cuts Michael Dye's deck after that search. And uh, yeah, William Yowell only with two red blasts in hand. Needs Michael Dye to name blue on his painter. That's the only way he can stay alive here. I don't think Michael Dye got a painter. I think he got another hair. Oh, he did. I didn't see a painter in his hand. I could be wrong. Yeah, I didn't see what he searched for. Either way, he'll be able to win this game via beatdown or combo. I think he has both options available to him now. He can just turn all his creatures sideways for a few more turns. Yeah. That's going to do it. Yep, so they draw a card, go down to three. And now but, his Ancient Tombs. Yeah, Ancient Tombs are alive again. Michael died just with a ton of cards in hand here. Strange to say, in this legacy mono red mirror, that solemn really pulled him ahead. And that is going to kill the ancient tomb, or the city of traders rather. And plays a magus, so he is at one, facing down three creatures. I just, uh, yeah, I don't see it. No, it doesn't look like uh, William Yowl has anything he can draw here, especially since he knows the top of his deck. Right. Michael Dye keeps one up for a blast, just in case. Lim Meow, looks like he's spinning the top one last time for good, you know, for old time's sake. Posterity. Yeah. And yeah, shows his hand to blast, blast Cargan. So a and crazy game. game, yeah. Michael crazy. Dye, our standard champion, takes it down. You know, it, it's, it's really hard to tell what the real difference maker in that game was. I don't it, know. Uh, it didn't seem like either player really did anything. No, they just sort of both sat there and uh, yeah, it was terrified of losing to getting <laughs> grinded out. And uh, they somehow managed to, you know, kill with the worst possible creatures that you can cast in Legacy. Yeah, and you know, I, I really thought that that's...